Go ahead. telling you this is going to be a very long drawn out boring and probably unwatchable video about what i do to your engine um if you need a replacement engine the upgrades i do to it as it's going in and there'll be a few dick jokes along the way and so on and so forth i'm not making any promises that this is going to be riveting entertainment but you know it is what it is um uh i believe it features quite a bit of ass crack as i mentioned in the video i have decided that I've lost the ass crack battle and I'm not fighting it anymore. I'm just letting it happen because I'm not going to win. And it's your problem, not my problem. You have to deal with it. I don't. It doesn't, I don't suffer because of my ass crack. You suffer because of my ass crack. Anyway, it's a couple days after Christmas. It's rainy. It's drizzly. It's miserable. And so on. Did you like that cool intro? That's fun. That's uh, arguably what I had children for exploitable band members that I don't have to pay. All right, let's get to it. Upgrading a Penastar with the bulletproofing crap. Just so you know, this includes the rocker arms, the lifters, the coolant crossover tube, the aluminum um, the aluminum thermostat and ho uh, housing. And I did not show, I did upgrade the oil cooler in this one to the dormant aluminum oil cooler, but I didn't show that because I have that start to finish in a separate video. And and look, this is not a porn genre. This is just how-to stuff. There you go. Enjoy. Love you. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah and all that stuff. Goodbye. Okay. There are many videos on this on the YouTubes. And the best one is made by a guy named David Pike over at Motor City Mechanic. If you were typing Motor City Mechanic Penistar <coughs> lifters, you find like a six-part video. Really well done. Uh, he does a great job. Nice guy, too. And um, he, would, he would show you a little bit more in detail. I'm going to kind of go fast because I see no reason not to. But the important thing to know here is that what I'm going to do is put the engine in its top dead center, more or less, position. Which is there's a mark on these uh, two cams that will point to each other and a mark on these two cams. When that's in its position, all both of the rear cams will be at rest and the front ones will be almost at rest. And it makes it easy to change. And also it tells you that you're in time. So you, you may not be able to see, but I'm looking at this arrow here and here, and I'm rotating the engine around. And so the arrows on the front heads line up and I match them with a, it's like a little dash on the back. You'll also note, maybe you can't see, maybe you can, that these are, these are marked intake and exhaust. So it's like, there's a lot of stuff in here that makes it, you can't put it back together wrong. Or, you know, it's self-reference in that sense. All right, we're coming up on, I don't know if you can see what those two marks here. Perfect. And if I look over here, pretty close to perfect. I'm going to make it perfect, not that it really matters. A small amount of degree won't really matter. But, what's next will, part of your special tools, is this little block that goes in here. And with the slightest bit of nudgings. I say with the slightest bit of nudgings. Goes in there and it locks the teeth of the phasers together so that uh, so that they can't move while I do what I'm about to do next. Because this tool is in here, holding these together, I actually don't need to do what I'm about to do, which is to uh, hold the camshaft while I put force on it.
But I like to do that because why chew up the tool or put unnecessary force on anything? And also there's kind of an isometric exercise in there where I can do this to crack this open. This is 115 pounds or something like that. It doesn't take much, but what's important is once it's loose, you can get it out finger tight because it's very well machined, precision crack. Unlike this pressure wrench, it's not very well machined precision craft. It's a Harbor Freight special. That. That can get here. Now, this is where the art part comes in. Other videos on the web are so much better than mine would ever be that I'm not going to take any time to, to show you exactly what I'm doing. But what I'm actually doing is I'm retracting the pin that holds the chain tensioner so I can get some tension on the chain so I can get it, get some play in it so I have the room to take it off. We'll see. One, oil control valve. Solenoid pushes it here and it bypasses oil and that's how it controls essentially the position by bypassing oil pressure of the chain, or of the uh, pan. This is your phaser. Uh, and it has a spring inside and it slips and it has a pin that holds it and blah, blah, blah. And that's how it, it changes the, the spin position versus the output position generally how it works. And as I say, there's a lot of things that are, these, these two holes are pointing straight up. There's a dot here that's lined up with the center of the villa. That is rest position. Now, time with this because if you strip one of these there's ways to get them off but you don't want to strip them. So I'm taking care to make sure I'm perpendicular to it. I'm not using crazy big tools that I can put too much torque into. I'm definitely not using power tools at this stage of the game. So again, it's somewhat built into the system for you not to fuck it up. Although I'm sure you could if you put your mind to it. I know you'll try. Here's our intake camshaft for bank two. We are in lovely shape. I'm doing is inspecting the lobes to see if I see any evidence of wear, and I do not. I've already sort of assessed this engine to a certain degree for uh, the tick, but what do I care? I'm here to solve the tick. Right, what I'm doing now is I'm testing the, the lifters. All six of these lifters are fine, so we're going to keep those. And I'm going to show you the new rockers going in. Now, this next step you probably don't have to do, but I'm going to do. Which is soaking them in oil. 
I just want to make sure that oil has penetrated to all their in the bearings and whatnot, just so it doesn't dry start up, which is what they do. Now, something I've also learned to do recently, and I can't say that I I invented this or I uh, you know was was on the leading edge of this, but some of the other places I look for pro, uh, Pemistar content have found these little bolts here, which are galley plugs. And if they come loose, you'll have weird codes. And you don't want weird codes. So I'm just going to make sure these galley plugs are tight. And they are. And that, believe it or not, should have been enough time to burp out all the air bubbles in my bearings here. I will also, while they're drippy with oil, motor oil, just spin them a little bit just to make sure that this is much, as much as it's gonna be there is gonna be there. And I only put the number that I need in the oil to avoid having to chase or, you know, just keep track of my shiznit. If this were a new, brand new camshaft you were installing, you might, might <coughs> install uh, or put some assembly lube on here. But since this cam is already lapped to the bearing journals it's going into, I would argue there's no need to do so. Okay. And you can tell when it's right. And because I put it in the park position, I'm not having to put it in with a lobe like that where it's pushed up and then force it down with the caps. It's already seated. And that's where it should be. Now, when this rotates back, you can see the mark will come back to where it needs to be. So, okay, this is one. Again, the way back in of these is more important than the way out. Uh, because you don't, you just don't want to, this is shit you don't want to force. You don't, there's no need to ape this stuff. The actual torque spec on it is quite low. I don't have it in front of me, but I will here in a minute. And it's surprisingly not that, it's, the bearing, the bearing is machined to make the clearance, and I would assume that the bearing is machined. They put the bearing cap on and then machine it. I don't know that for sure, but that's how I would do it if I wanted to make it as accurate as possible, but also foolproof, because as long as this cap is completely tight, as long as it's holding these two surfaces together, it can't be wrong. And thus, it is, it is less critical than if you were setting the clearance by how much torque you're putting on the cap. I, I hope what I'm saying makes sense. I don't know if it does. Does it make sense to you? <laughs> Carefully, gonna do the opposite of what I just said to do. Don't use power tools on this stuff. But I'm just, just what? Yeah. There's a lot of threads and I'm old and I don't need the carpal tunnel. Normally I'd brag and say I'm so fucking smart I have all this stuff memorized, but I clearly don't. So I have my chart here that tells me what the torque sequence is. We're going to do the cams one at a time, not for any particular reason other than, I mean it arguably takes longer that way, but I, if it's going to be a problem I want there to be half the problem rather than twice the problem. So we're going to need... Oil control is 118 foot-pounds, which is a lot, but these are 84 inch-pounds, which is only 7 foot-pounds. So, correct procedure, 84, that's 80, and that's 84. Alright, what does it say? One, two. I'm actually going to go in and just make sure they're all kind of snug. There's no perfection required. 84. There's 84. 84. 84. In case you've never done this before, this is a torque wrench and it has a little sort of a click feature where when it reaches the desired tension it 
it does a little clicky thing that I can feel, you may not feel. Like that. Baby four. Baby four. Baby four. Now we're going to go back and check. Actually, the smart thing to do is to just give it a little bit of. You're going to have to pull the black plastic a little bit towards you without letting it slip because it's a lot better. There you go. Got it. Okay. question is there any reason to film the rest of this and the answer is no um, as I say there are better videos of this to see elsewhere and uh, I will I will put the camera back on when we do the dick and the thermostat but that's the general gist of it fun stuff eh okay kiddies well <clears throat> we have skipped quite a bit Not that there was much to skip but anyway did the rocker arms and only needed one lifter on this side Rocker arms, one lifter on this side. Put the valve covers back on with the Forma gasket. Reinstalled the cam position sensors. Changed all six plugs. Uh, you can see the cap is orange. What you can't see is that I also replaced the, installed the Dorman fancy ass aluminum, the fancy ass aluminum oil cooler. I installed the old rail, fuel rail, because in a ProMaster, the nipple points to the transmission side. In a minivan or Journey or most other applications, it, it comes out here. Everything's the same, it's just that the fuel comes up the passenger side in some of those vehicles, and then the ProMaster comes up the driver's side. I believe, I, I'd have to look this up to tell you for sure, but I believe in the front, in the rear wheel drive applications, like a char, uh, an LX car, a Charger, a Challenger, or a, well, I guess that's all that's left, a Charger and a Challenger, I believe the fuel rail is swappable because it also comes in on that side. Whatever. Anyway, that's new. This is uh, rebuilt with the gaskets under it and everything's torqued to spec. The last two pieces of the puzzle for this prep are not particularly exciting and I, I'm not sure if I'll film them. I mean, I wouldn't subject you to watching this. Besides, from this view, you're gonna get a lot of ass crack. And by the way, I'd like to talk about ass crack for a minute. I've stopped fighting. It's a battle I'm gonna lose, and it's your problem now. It's not my problem anymore. The pants are not gonna stay up. The ass crack is gonna come out, and the midget with a hatchet is gonna make himself known, no matter what you do. And I'm done fighting. Uh, the, uh, the last part of this upgrade for swap, knowing that this is the full boat, are these two pieces, which you've seen me blather on about before. Oh, for the love of Minnie Pearl's hat. Um, this is the Dorman fancy aluminum thermostat and housing, which will go there. Not a very thrilling uh, video since it's only two bolts. This is what is known in the industry as the dick. And you'll never guess why it's called the dick. <laughs> All right, anyway, comes with the gasket. I'll just place that neatly over there. Um, the, the, you know, the, the dick lives under the motor mount here, and the motor mount has to come off anyway because this is a Journey motor mount, and the correct motor mount, ProMaster specific motor mount, is on the other engine, so that has to come off anyway. Maybe I'll film that. But uh, our fancy dick here will go in now. The dick is a piece that Dorman tooled up to make this because there is a history of this thing leaking. And I have videos on this as well, when your dick gets leaky, what to do. But the evidence, I guess I can't show you, is always right here at the seam between this little ear thing and the motor mount. You'll see pink or orange residue depending on the color of your coolant. 
the only downside of this thing, even when they leak, they don't leak a lot really. But what happens is these get misdiagnosed as water pumps because the leak goes down and comes over the water pump and comes out and anybody looks goes, oh well, shit, the water pump's leaking. So this is a point of contention, but in, in all my many uh, years of doing this, I have never, ever seen one of these water pumps go bad. Now that's a bold claim and yet I stand by it because in fact, I have not seen a single water pump go bad. I've seen perhaps six perfectly good water pumps replaced at great expense by dealers because the dick was leaking. And what, what the customer would tell me is, yeah, they told me it was my water pump, they replaced it and it's still leaking. And then I go, do you see any pink right there? And they go, yes. And I go, it's your dick that's leaking. By the way, the dick, and technically that's its balls because they, you know, they mate like that. And then you got the whole rig. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I can regale you with enough dick jokes to keep your interest for this uh, portion of the video. Or, or, or not. I don't, I don't really know. Helps if you tell the thing to turn in the correct direction. Goodbye. Just as a way to keep from losing them, I'm going to put these two bolts in the new dick. That would be very smart on my part. Okay, now. I know that some of these are 16s. The rest are 13s. I don't know if... If I look at my analytics, most of my channel is old men. And old men are used to working on things that might be uh, English. This vehicle is all metric and very metric. And just my roundabout way of saying what you should, what you should know is that almost everything on this van is 10, 13, or 8. There's a few exceptions, this being one of them. I believe these are 16s. I could be wrong. But I wasn't. I have a, in my tool stool, which is a great name, I have a, a magnetic tray with various sizes. So that's what I'm doing. I'm reaching into my tool stool to get the right thingy. Sometimes you gotta man it first. Oy. Oh, who loves you, baby? You gotta be smarter than the goddamn tool. Alright. I will keep the bolts with this so they don't get lost. Not that it would matter, we have bolts. There's your dick in its, in its natural habitat. So this one's a little weird when you're doing the dick. Some of them are different lengths, and I can, honestly can't remember which ones. So I'm going to try, for the hell of it, to keep them, if I can, I should make a chart, because some of them are short and some of them are long. And it doesn't really matter. You figure it out when you go to put it together and it doesn't go together, but why should I have to think? I should have a chart. Perhaps, perhaps, if I do this without them falling out, maybe I can make a chart. You see where I'm going here? I'm going to try and get the dick off with all the bolts in it. And then I can take a picture of it. And tell you where they all go back in. Which one is longs and which ones is short. Maybe I could even create a little memory mnemonic. Like a little song with an acronym or some shit. Okay. Ever so gently. So that they don't fall. But you know they're gone. Oh, 
that's not one, that's why. Why did I do this? Didn't a smart person do that? That was a water pump bolt. This is fun. This is some properly touchy stuff here, trying to preserve all the bolts in it. And, and utterly pointless, because surely I would be able to figure it out, but it would be nice to know for all time. Because you know what I'll do? I'll go back and watch this video. I learn from myself all the time. How the hell did I do that? I watch my video. I do what you do. I watch my own video, and then I masturbate furiously. As I'm sure you are doing right now as the old man of the sea here is about to get this thing all, all out intact. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Touch me there. Touch me, babe. Okay, now. Oh, I'd use my phone, but you're using it. So this is a pretty good way to, to do it, actually. Which ones are your longs and which ones are your shorts? This is stupid. They're all long, except one, two, three along the top. This one, this one, this one, and, and this one. Around the thermostat and here. If you want to remember what you're short, the short hairs are hugging the balls and there's one mid shaft. How about that? All right, I can handle that. All right, I got, Here's your old gasket. I don't even need to scrape that, it's so clean. You'll notice no corrosion, no, uh, nothing, nothing weird going on here. As I say, I, I could scrape this with a razor, but it doesn't need it. And it goes on because this, you know, this, this kind of gasket, compression gasket, this shit works. There's a reason these things got popular. Let's just put the three short ones in. And uh, perhaps I'll be uh, nice enough to put the actual torque spec on your screen for those of you playing along at home. Although the torque spec doesn't really matter. The answer is snug. Again, much like the uh, mostly using 8s, 10s, and 13s on this van, the torque specs are mostly 106, 89, or sometimes slightly less. They're not... Um, and then mid shaft. Uh, they're not um, particularly, th this part here, I mean, there's a torque spec for the valve covers and I use it, but it's not like the valve covers are gonna fail if I don't use that spec. Jesus Christ, it's not hard. It's you're just compressing rubber, so it's quite flexible. Same with the intake gaskets here. What makes the seal is the rubber compressing. So as long as it compresses it some, uh, it'll, it'll seal. It doesn't have a choice, like your mom. Some of these bolts are said to have a little, little sort of a plastic uh, little little sleeve on them. This one does not appear to. I have a hunch that maybe this engine had its this donor engine, even though only at 103,000 miles had its water pump replaced, because I saw some evidence of I saw some evidence that somebody's been here, but I'm not sure what they've done. I think somebody had a valve cover off at one point but they did, why? They did not do anything surgery in there. All the rockers were original. The plugs in this thing were original, I could tell. Um, uh, but it, it, it may just be that that particular day at the factory, somebody just got a little loopy with the spooey. And, uh, oh, did I do that wrong? Oh, there is another short one on the other side of the balls here. Look at that. All right, so so basically, if we're looking, this is a dick. Top, top, and bottom there, but not what do you call it not southeast. Florida doesn't get a shorty. How about that? It's a stupid memory gimmick, really. Let me get right down to it. All right, I I don't even know if I'll keep much of this video because what you saw was it's just not very interesting. I mean, even I wouldn't watch this a second time. And I was there.
There's always another hole. I thought you knew that. What we're going to do is snug it. And then like anything, you would, you would use common sense and you go, well, should I just crank the shit out of each one of these now? No, get them snug and then do them, finish them up by hand. Don't rely on the power tool because it'll, it'll either be too much or not enough. Or, you know. At the same time, you want to use it to not get the carpal tunnel. Watch a fat man es estimate what snug should feel like. Well, that's snug. That's snug. She ain't going nowhere. They don't make them like that anymore. Back in my day. That reminds me of your mom. doesn't kill you, only makes you stronger. I'm saying old man phrases. Brakes are cheap, cheap transmissions aren't. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Make an ass out of you and me. Broken clocks right twice a day. Working hard or hardly working. That's a lot of pump. Shave his butt and teach him to walk backwards. Okay, rubber compressing snug. Now, the thermo shit. Look at Dorman, they give it to you with the thermostat. What a, what a bunch of swell fellows. Check the gasket and make sure it's okay. I didn't even have to install the gasket. It came pre-installed. And this is made in the USA, which implies some poor schmuck American has to sit there and put that gasket in all day long. My God, what a brain-numbing task. We talk about jobs in this country, but there's some jobs I don't want. Um, particularly the, 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 the checkout thing at the grocery store, where now it's all self-checkout. At first I was very offended because, you know, you can't even pay somebody to take my money. That should be the fun part for you. You got to have a robot take my money. Then I realized uh, I don't want somebody to stand there for eight hours a day going boop, boop. It's mind numbing. It's terrible. It's a horrible existence. And it led me to the conclusion of something I've always known. The goal isn't 0% unemployment. The goal is 100% unemployment. I'm sick of work and labor. I want our robot overlords to take care of it. I want the Jetson shit where I don't even have to get up out of the chair to get a, a, a adult beverage. And you want it too. Admit it. I want all peoples to live in sloth. All right, she's ready to go. And thus concludes our engine prep video. I would like to recap now. Uh, sorry. Thus concludes our engine prep video. I'd like to recap of what all was done is I prepped this engine to go into your, to replace the engine in your ProMaster. Upgrades include all the rocker arms, the AH rocker arms, and any lifters under them that need replaced. I test them by hand when I do that and I determine. In this case, there was one on this bank and one on this bank. All the lifters, all the lifters, one rocker, I'm sorry, one lifter, one lifter, all the rockers, all the rockers. I've also upgraded to the Dorman aluminum oil cooler, which includes new gaskets and a new filter and this fancy orange cap. I've put the fuel rail that's going to be going on the van because of the direction. I have, what else have I done? I have upgraded the dick and balls, which is the coolant crossover tube and thermostat and thermostat housing. I have uh, redone the 
I haven't used a new valve cover gasket because these came off intact. Often you can reuse them. Again, they're pretty sturdy. But I have replaced all the spark plugs and uh, we won't be replacing the coils, but I will be using the, the lowest mileage, nice condition coils, whichever that is. And I'm pretty sure that's the one that came with the new one. They're factory and, and they're fine. This is a matter of opinion, but I think that the coils, they don't last forever, but they can last four or 500,000 miles. It's just a transformer. It doesn't really wear out as such. It fails or it works. Uh, valve cover gaskets, what else is going to get replaced on this engine? We may or may not replace this dipstick tube. In the past, I always replace them because this will crash into the, into the front um, cross member on the ProMaster. And the solution is just to bend it, but it actually sits quite low in the van, so you have to reach over. But to put a, a ProMaster, a proper ProMaster dipstick in it requires getting this tube out and often the tube breaks and it just turns into a big hassle. However, there's an upside. Because this is a minivan engine, it does not have the bullet tube. It has a flat blade tube, which is way easier to read and way better for all involved. I suppose before this engine goes in, we'll change that oil. And the bracket for the power steering is there. Oh, I suppose I need to change the exhaust gaskets and a few other things will get done here, but my, my work here is done. Hey, we've had a good time. Let's party. All right, I gotta go. I gotta get something to eat and then mail out more of those goddamn nipples.